What's your biggest takeaway from the Olympic trials? What do you think you learned the most in that experience? The Olympic trials, I mean, this is the second time I competed at the Olympic trials. Um, you know, I, f I learned a, a lot the first time, and I was obviously much, much younger. I just, you know, I, experience wise, it was definitely something that I, I thought that it could benefit, you know, stick around for another four years and competing at another Olympic trials. Um, other than this one, I mean, I, re I, I didn't really learn that much, you know, I mean, other than just uh, as, a, as an ind individual, you know, just all the hard work that I put in. Uh, to prepare for the Olympic trials. Um, I learned a lot through that, but um, other than that, I mean, it was something that, I mean, I learned a lot from my first time competing in the Olympic trials back in 2000 and 2012. So, um, I mean, either way, they're, you know, great experiences. They're something that not many people are, you know, are, are qualified to compete in, you know. So, for me to be able to compete in two Olympic trials, I think it says a lot about me as a fighter. Is that still a goal for you in like 2020? I know it's a long way away, but is that still something that you want to come back and do? Nah, I'm pretty much done. Because uh, once you enter the professional ranks, then you can't you can't compete in the Olympics. That's just how it works. So yeah, this was my last ride, you know. But um, either way, like I said, I mean, two Olympic trials, uh, you know, five-time national champion. I mean, I've done, you know, I've represented my country internationally. You know, I've gotten that privilege and, I mean, that's that's I'd say that's a pretty good amateur career. So now it's time to, you know, uh, take our talents to the professional ranks. What about the uh, Pan American Games? Because you did that over the summer. What was that experience like? That was an awesome experience. Uh, Toronto Games were or the Pan American Games were in Toronto. So it was just you know the the vibe, uh, the atmosphere that uh, that the city had. You know, it prepared well for the Pan American Games. You know, you're talking about you know so many countries being there and. And it was just a great experience. Just, uh, you know, it was an honor just to, you know, represent my country, you know, my family, my city. Uh, it was a blessing, honestly. Um, and that's where I learned, uh, I learned a lot, too. Um, I eventually lost to, I lost in the second round to the number one guy in the world from Cuba. So uh, that was definitely a learning experience. And, that, that, you know, that fight is something where, you know, the, that, even though the outcome was a loss, you know, I, I, I learned so much. It was a learning experience. That's what I took it as. And, uh, you know, I know that that would definitely be beneficial uh, uh, coming up now in my future. When, for when you've done the Pan American Games and these Olympic trials, how do you think that's going to help your professional career going forward? Do you think there's a lot of things you can take away to, for your future? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, these are the top guys, you know, in the country, in the world, you know, that you're fighting, you know. and. Uh, obviously, at the professional ranks, like you know, it's it's obviously a little different. You know, uh, you you're gonna be fighting stiffer competition, more rounds, but this is ex this is experience that not many people have. You know, so uh, so uh, eventually now our our goal is to become a world champion, and you know, to have this kind of experience, I think it's definitely beneficial for me to strive for that goal. So, what's next now? You mentioned that. You got plans to turn pro. What does that mean over the next couple of months and next year? Yeah, so the next couple of months are going to be busy. I mean, it's a process because uh, first you want to find a good manager, obviously a manager that's connected, a manager that has world champions with them, and that's definitely the case with me. So now it's about you know just uh, getting, just uh, putting, laying down all the offers on the table, and then you know going through it with my family, my coach, and then we're going to talk and then see what's best for me. Um, and then from there we move on and you eventually sign with a promotional company and that's where the money comes in and that's where you start your career. And then uh, obviously the first couple of years as a professional, um, you're not fighting as stiff of competition because you have to adjust to the professional ranks and uh, just the professional level, it's, a, it's different, you know, styles, definitely more calm, you know, because just imagine amateur boxing, you have three rounds, you got, you know, you got to do a lot in less time. While in the pros, you know, you start off at four, six, eight, ten, and then eventually championship fights are 12 rounds. So it's a process. So, you, you know, you go on, the, com the competition, fight by fight, continues to just develop and, and become a little stiffer. But uh, first two years, I mean, you're, you're seeing at a, you're seeing higher activity. So it could be fighting every month. You know, or you know, uh, it just depends how the outcomes. If you know, for example, you get a first round knockout, you know, you're ready to continue to fight. You know, let's just say three weeks from then. So that's how it works. It's a little different, but uh, but I'm definitely, you know, definitely ready for it. How would you describe your particular boxing style to someone who maybe 
doesn't really know boxing that much. And do you think that's going to change at all as you move into professional boxing? I, I don't think so. I'm more of a, a of a, what we call a boxer puncher. Um, you know, I'll box when I have to box, and that means uh, kind of just using the ring, lateral movement. You know, move and find smart against, let's just say, a guy that's more aggressive. So you use the ring more. You know, I have good height. I have long arms. Uh, but I can also get in there and, you know, uh, I'll, if we got a brawl, we got a brawl. We'll go at it. You know, we go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's how it is. Um, um, I'd say that's definitely more my style. The thing is I, I have more of, a, more of a pro style anyway. So I think that uh, that's definitely beneficial for me. Um, but that's more definitely more of my style. So I, I do a little bit of both. You know, if we got a box, we got a box. You know, we play it smart. But if not, hey, we'll go toe to toe. You fight at 141 right now. Do you, mm, are there any plans like change that? Maybe go lower. Or higher? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my pro career at 135. Uh, it's a little different in a pros because we only have to weigh weigh in once, and that's uh, about 36, 24 to 36 hours prior to the fight. While in the amateurs. We fight. We're like we fight almost five times. You know, we, we we'll fight every day. So if you win, you continue to fight the next day, day by day, and you have to weigh in. So that's why you can't. You know, you it's it's a little easier in the pros to come down a little bit more and then hydrate right after. You know, you have 24, 30, 24 to 36 hours of hydrate. So that's why in boxing, when you'll see these guys make weight, let's just say at 135, and then by fight time they're at like 150 because you know they basically hydrated back up. So, uh, you know, you really can't do that in amateurs because obviously, you know, let's just say I fight the first day I win, I have to make weight the very next day. So I have to watch what I eat so I can't blow up and hydrate, you know. So uh, that's how it works. So I'll be at 35 and then uh, eventually as, you know, at the year, as the years pass by, I can, I'll continue to rise up. So 140, 147, and who knows, maybe by the end of the career, I'll be at 154. So that's, you know, and that's definitely a good range. Uh, right now, that's definitely where the, the uh, most of the attraction, where most of the money's at right now. So, uh, yep, that would be that's what we're going to be doing. You've had such great success at 141, and as an amateur national championships ring number one, what do you think makes you different than other boxers? What do you think has been kind of the key, key to your success so far in your career? I think it's. Uh, just my just my process of thinking, and obviously me, uh, you know, having a, a college degree. I mean, I think that helped a lot. Um, you know, just just not many people could say that. You know, in the in the boxing game, that they have a college degree. So, how I've, I just my process of thinking, and 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 you know, the way I I, I did things. I think I, I definitely uh, I grew as an individual inside and outside the sport. Uh, you know, with this aspect of, you know, having an education, being here at Marquette, um, it's definitely, you know, made me a better person where, you know, sometimes I had to wake up as early as seven o'clock in the morning to go train because I knew that, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta put the training in, but then I got class later. So, you know, I just, it made me kind of put my priorities in order, you know, uh, but I did, that's definitely something I, I, I'm very grateful and I don't regret at all that, you know, I came here four years, you know, and just doing the boxing and, and, and school thing, it was definitely difficult. But uh, I think um, it's something that uh, I'm glad that I, I uh, kind of experienced it, and I know that it will definitely prepare me for, uh, for in the future. You mentioned briefly your schedule when you were going to school and also training. What was that schedule like when you were in the middle of taking classes but also training for amateur fights and stuff like that. Yeah, we're talking about waking up as early as 7, 8 o'clock in the morning to go train or put in our strength, strength and conditioning. That's about an hour, hour and a half. And then I would come home, change, come here to class. You know, it depends uh, my class load. I'll be here, let's just say, from 10, 11, all the way to 2, 3 o'clock. So I'd go home, try to eat something, and then right back to the gym from uh, from 4.30 to 7 o'clock. I'll be in the gym, and obviously after that, try to put in, uh, you know, put in some time uh, for homework and then just rest up and that's pretty much that was pretty much uh, uh, just a, a regular day for me and we're talking about five to six times a week so uh, that's just you know that's just how it is you know and I, under, I understood that uh, this this kind of dedication this kind of discipline is this is what it's going to take for me to be successful with the sport. And what is your kind of motivation when you're training for boxing, why you've been doing it for so many years? Is it just you want to be the best at, you know, what you do or what you love doing? Of course, I mean, you have these uh, kind of uh, just like kind of for like my own personal reasons, you know, obviously I want to be the best, you know, I want to be successful, but I'd say my family, 
uh, it's definitely obviously uh, uh, one major motivation uh, just to, you know, my parents came, uh, they're from uh, Utuado, Puerto Rico, uh, very, they grew up very poor. You know, my mom has to, uh, uh, included, I included uh, 12 brothers and sisters. My dad has eight brothers and sisters. And we're not talking, we're talking about not, you know, it's not really a good part of Puerto Rico. So, uh, you know, it's rough and it's, uh, you know, it's out in the mountains. So life is a little different. And, um, you know, for them to come over, I mean, this is what they envisioned to me, you know, to uh, to have their son, you know, graduate from a great college like like Marquette and obviously be successful within the sport. So uh, my motivation, I just want to, you know, I want to be successful for them. And then also, uh, I'd say uh, my community, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, just the community of Milwaukee, you know, uh, just I'm trying to be a good example to especially to the youth, you know, uh, just uh, just trying to be a leader trying to be a role model that people can look up to and like, you know anything is possible you know no matter what what background you come from you know what side of the what side of the town you live in you know anything is possible you can do it you know it's just you just got to act you got it's all about action and you got to work you mentioned before that Puerto Rican culture kind of has boxing ingrained in it how has that kind of motivated you to maybe start when you were young or keep going? Was it something that you felt was just something part of your culture that you think you should keep on as a tradition or anything? Yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a big, uh, a, a major influence in why I started the sport. I uh, started uh, watching the sport at the age of three. Uh, my favorite fighter, his name was Felix Tito Trinidad. He was, uh, you know, one of the best, you know, during his time. And that's why I grew up, you know, I wanted to be just like him. You know, and he had uh, this connection with the culture, with his with his people, and um, I kind of that's I kind of fell in love with that. You know, I was like, man, I want to be like Tito. You know, like uh, just the connection that he had, and and you know, um, uh, at the age of three, that's when I you know I kind of just like I told my dad like, yo, I want some gloves. You know, like, give me some gloves. And I used to go around punching things and in, in the house, and uh, eventually at seven years old, I told my dad, I want to start fighting, you know, and, uh, he was, a uh, Tito was a big, was a big reason for that. And obviously, uh, my dad was, a uh, my dad was a big fan, you know, and he tried, he, he tried boxing, uh, back when he was in Puerto Rico, but obviously he didn't have the level of, you know, of discipline, dedication that I had. So, you know, and times were a little different, you know, uh, back then, but, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, and my dad supported me, my entire family supported me, especially my mother. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've been doing it ever since. How has Felix Trinidad, has he influenced at all how you box personally? Have you like taken parts of his game, maybe just watching him? Yeah, Felix Tito Trinidad, he was, uh, he was a fighter. He had a, you know, he liked to fight toe to toe, you know, and uh, there's moments where I just, well, uh, it's funny because my friends will just say, uh, oh, he's in that Puerto Rican mode where he's just going toe to toe and you're just, you know, going at it. But I, I would consider myself a, a smart fighter. You know, I, I, I'll study my opponent, see what he has. You know, obviously, uh, you know, many boxers have different styles, so you should know how to adjust. You know, when you got, like I said, you go, when you got a box, you got a box. You got to play it smart. When you got to go toe to toe, you got to go toe to toe. So um, I would say that that's definitely one of my, uh, 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 greatest characteristics that I have as a fighter, definitely my my just my smartness, and you know just uh, you know using my ring smarts and just using my head when I'm in there. Let's talk about Marquette a little bit. You mentioned that for the reason you came here, that you had a little exposure before in high school. Would you say that's the main reason you came to Marquette? What were some of the big reasons? Why? Well, yeah, that was definitely one uh, major reason why, you know, I was uh, part of the Upper Bound program, and then eventually that uh, led into me being into the EOP program, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't without the, the, the support of the Educational Opportunity Program, EOP program here in Marquette. I'm very grateful for everything that they've done, and they've helped me a lot. That, that would be one reason. Another reason is that I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to move, like, uh, move away because you know, my training, my coach, everything is based here in Milwaukee. So me going, let's just say, uh, out of state or, you know, up north or, you know, anywhere, um, it just would have been, you know, it just would have impacted, impacted my boxing career. So, um, you know, I wanted to stay here, want to stay local, um, you know, and then the gym is literally like, like three, four minutes away from here. So it's on the south side. So, uh, 
you know, I just had my gym right there. It was just, it was just perfect. Everything came in together, and good thing is that you know, once I got accepted to Marquette, I knew that you know, I could, I could get my college degree, and at the same time continue, uh, you know, uh, uh, working on my craft and becoming better as a boxer. And you walked the, you walked the stage in May, but you had you know a couple classes to finish up. What was that feeling like when you graduated? Obviously, it's a little different because you still had some. You weren't totally leaving Marquette, but what were kind of the feelings and thoughts you were thinking of when you were graduating? Oh, I felt relief. It just felt good. Um, uh, just looking back and, you know, uh, four years, you know, it's, it's pretty much, I mean, obviously it's not as, as, uh, as uh, difficult as, you know, as boxing where, you know, you have to train for hours and, you know, it's, it becomes very stressful. I mean, school was like that too, though. But um, either way, it was just, it was very challenging. Um, uh, it's just, I mean, like I said, it helped me become a better individual. And, uh, and just looking back, you know, all the years I put in, you know, it's just like boxing where, you know, for example, when I won my first national championship at the age of 16, and I look back, you know, ever since I started at eight years old, you know, look, kind of look at the progress. So that's kind of what I did with school, you know, when I graduated, you know, uh, just, you know, being on that stage and, you know, walking the stage, um, you know, and just looking back, you know, four years, everything that I've been through and just kind of like my progress, you know. So I was very happy and, and just to see my parents' face, you know, my family's, you know, reaction to it. You know, everyone was so proud of me. I'm the very first. I'm the very first person in my family to attend and graduate from college. So it was just a blessing. I was just so happy, and and you know, I, I it was definitely you know a, a great accomplishment. Why did you pick criminology and law studies as your major? I mean, no particular reason. I mean, I obviously I felt that it was you know really interesting. I kind of liked the whole uh, you know CSI Law and Order kind of thing. You know, I liked those shows. So. Uh, you know, at first it was something that I thought, oh, let's give it a try, you know, and that's, you know, it kind of stuck and, uh, you know, and I'm, you know, I just, it's something that I find interesting, you know, and, uh, and yeah, so that's basically it. no particular reason, but, you know, I, I kind of just stuck with it and, you know, eventually yeah, that's what I graduated with. So you mentioned that it was a big thing for your family to be the first to attend and graduate college was that a motivating factor for you when you're you know trudging through training then I got to go to class later today was that something that you used to motivate you? Oh yeah most definitely it was a uh, you know like I said just seeing through all the struggles that my parents went and obviously they didn't have the same opportunities that I had so I just wanted to take advantage of the opportunities that you know that, that I've obviously been blessed with you know and just to you know and and my coach was a big part of that too so I'd say my family and my coach you know, uh, they uh, they talked to me and, and and they just told me just you know stick with it. There was there were many times you know I'm pretty sure this happens with every student. It was like man, I, you just want to hang it up. You know, just forget about it. You know, and especially me where I had boxing. You know, and like, I, this is school's always been intended to be my plan B anyway. So um, you know, there were many times where I just said you know forget this. You know, I'm turning pro or you know I'm just gonna stick with boxing and focus on boxing, but. You know, those are, you know, kind of like trials and tribulations that everyone goes through in life. And, you know, I stuck with it. And then it's just, it, it just feels way better when you actually finish and, you know, you get it done. So what was your uh, kind of like favorite thing or something that you'll miss most about Marquette? Uh, something that I'll miss most. I, definitely the atmosphere, you know, just the student body and being, you know, with everyone, uh, you know, at the games or, you know, any activities outside of, you know, uh, of, of, of the class, you know, um, that's something that I'll miss. Um, but, you know, I always, you know, I'm a Golden Eagle for life. That's just how it is. You know, it's, you know I'm a graduate from here. I'm so happy that I came to Marquette and uh, I'll never, you know, Marquette always have a, a, a place in my heart. So how about least favorite thing? <laughs> my least? Won't, something you won't miss about <laughs> going to Marquette. Uh, something that I won't miss, definitely, uh, <laughs> I'd say all the, you know, all the 10 page, 15 page papers, the exam, just exam week, or the entire week, uh, something I won't miss, you know, it's very stressful and especially when you're training. Uh, it's happened to me the last two years now where I've had major tournaments uh, either the week before exam week. So we're talking about competing, like just putting all this, you know, preparation and, 
And then once I come back, oh, I have four exams, you know, four final exams. So now it's time to, you know, uh, put the work in and that, you know, and study and stuff like that. So uh, that's something that I won't miss for sure. But uh, either way, I, you know, it's stuff that you have to go through and, you know, we got the job done. We did it, you know, I got my degree. You know, I'm just glad that I can, I'm, I'm able to say that. Obviously, you had a unique experience, but do you have any, maybe like advice for freshmen coming in when they're just starting at Marquette? Um, any freshman, I mean, uh, it's kind of difficult because um, obviously I kind of had two things going on, you know. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of difficult for me to say, oh, just, you know, focus on one thing when in reality, you know, I was just, I was kind of doing both things, but I'd, I, I'd just say, you know, obviously, uh, you know, just focus on, on, on the long term. You know, there's obviously everyone goes through trials and tribulations in life and you're definitely going to experience them here in college. So that's something that I would say that, you know, don't let that get to you. It's just how you say uh, here in uh, kind of in, uh, in the boxing terms, you know, you fall down, you get knocked down once, you come back twice, you know, it's harder. You know, you just got to get up and, you know, everyone's going to get knocked down. It's just a matter of, you know, how bad you want it, get back up and keep pushing.